So what's all this mysterious fog and that hair-like mold or fungus everybody's seeing? Well, I think I know. First, let's start with what fog is and how it's formed. So fog is H2O or ice crystals formed when the air temperature drops to within 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit of the dew point while the relative humidity sustains near 100%. If it's 100%, you wouldn't be able to breathe because 100% humidity is liquid water and equates to a body of water at that point. The cold overnight temperatures roll in over the warm humid earth and usually near a body of water to supply that humidity. It draws from these sources its media or water vapor and condenses that media into aerosolized droplets of H2O to create fog as it cools. When the evaporation is occurring that afternoon prior, it is common for the fungal spores and small particulates and particles and such little various bits of dust to be included in that evaporation and are usually what create the core of the H2O water vapor to condense around. So these particulates are actually what the center of the water droplets and what make the water droplets. Next, we have to fit in how do the fungal spores play into all this? Well, if you don't know, fungal blooms, mold blooms, algae blooms, they all proliferate through the release of those spores, usually in like large blooms. So the spores are carried away through all manner of transportations, but the most common is through air and water currents or flows. But it can also be on your clothing. I mean, literally everything, fungal spores, mold spores, they're everywhere. You can destroy them, but it's difficult to destroy them. That's how potent they are. I mean, they can get kind of everywhere. And funny enough, because they are so minute, they are exceptionally effective at traveling global distances through the upper atmospheric air currents. So they get picked up from evaporation and sent into the stratosphere. But through that evaporation, the upper atmospheric air currents will take those spores globally and deposit them throughout all over the earth. So that just shows how well they're able to travel. But what this means is that knowing the scale in which the blooms can occur and knowing the fog is being created by sucking up all the local particulates, including the spores, and then is dispersing and depositing those spores in the form of fog across large areas, we can conclude that this is a natural event and not something part of a coordinated man-made effort or anything like that. It appears to be purely natural. We see this sometimes through like algae blooms, we, you know, they decimate a lot of marine life in the areas in, in which they propagate. And, you know, it's harmful for the local areas. But I think that just the fact that we can see that these blooms, these spores, whatever they are, are specifically attaching themselves to feces, that tells us right there, we've given it its energy source that it needs. Everything needs an energy source in order to propagate, to grow. Whenever we give something an unlimited energy source, it can just grow. And especially these funguses and molds and things like that, they can grow exponentially fast, way faster than what we're typically used to. You know, it's not uncommon for you to walk out in your yard one afternoon and it looks fine. You wake up the next day, you go out in your yard and suddenly you've got a hundred mushrooms that have grown up overnight that are sizable. That just shows how quickly fungus and such can grow. To assume that, oh, that couldn't have happened overnight, it very much could have. Those hairs, those funguses could have very easily grown that quickly overnight to their degree that they were found. Here he is playing with the dog shit. Um, not what I would do, but I'm smart. Ugh. Oh. But from what I can tell, he's saying that the fog is causing a problem or causing this growth in his yard. And again, this relates back to the feces. So everywhere that there is human or animal waste, this mold or fungus grows. And that's not outside the realm of possibilities in any way whatsoever, simply because that's where they get their nutrients. That's where the energy is provided from. If they could grow like that normal soil, they would. They need these types of biological waste or organic waste in order to grow. So it was just a, a really kind of a perfect storm. If you have a fog that rolls in, that's um, in conjunction with a mold or a fungal spore bloom, and all those fungal or mold spores get kicked up, disseminated and dispersed throughout all the fog over a large area, then it condenses back into uh, liquid water it comes back down to earth all those spores now have purchase within these matters of fecal <laughs> um, and so they're able to grow just so quickly overnight because they finally have the ability to grow like that it's what they're designed to do i think it's easy to say that this is a natural event taking place and although we have a lot of weird things happening all around the u.s all around the world right now i don't think it's appropriate i think it's just premature to say that this should be included along with the rest of those events it just doesn't 
seem to fall in line. Even though it is sensational, I think it's a natural event. What do y'all think?